And now, another exciting episode of As the River Churns. Good afternoon, everybody. We are so delighted to see you today, or that you are seeing us, and today is an exciting day. Today is Resonant Services Day on As the River Turns. So um, I have with me our Resonant Services team, Destiny and Brian, who you Hi. guys know, I hope you should by now. So Let's turn this, Destiny. One, oh, oh. two, yay. You did it. So we have um, a really cool presentation coming up for you in just a bit. But before that, we're going to do some of the normal things. And then we're going to chat for just a minute. So I'm going to start with the statistics because um, everybody's used to us sharing these. And so these are the numbers that come to us from North Carolina DHHS that just give us an update. And so we have, um, as of today at 11 a.m., laboratory confirmed cases, 5,465. We have 131 deaths, so we need to continue to pray for those families and those folks. Completed tests, 70,917. Currently hospitalized, 452 and that's in 94 counties. And so some of the top counties, Guilford, we have 154 cases, Forsyth, 122, Orange, 172, Durham, 350, Wake, 552, and Mecklenburg, 1,084. So the hope is we're on our way to our peak and so we can be on the other side soon. So, um, are you guys excited to be on TV? Yeah. Always. Yeah? Speak, yeah. Speaking to your yeah. microphone, Speaking Destiny. Speaking to your microphone. So um, <laughs> today we're doing a presentation on different ways for you all to communicate. We know this isolation is hard for everybody, and so we want to help you with that, with ways for you to talk to family and loved ones since you can't see them as you're used to. But before that, I just kind of wanted to chat a little bit about resident services because that's that's, that's our favorite do. department yeah. right <laughs> yeah so i uh, just wanted to share kind of the changes and the things that we are doing to try to serve you now that the fabric of what we do has changed drastically so brian you want to your events obviously and activities and i know your world has changed a lot so you want to talk yeah. about that so um Originally, this beginning of April, we were supposed to be in Charleston for four days and three nights, obviously. That's right. That did not happen. Um, but it has changed a lot for me and the role that I play here. But I still get to entertain everyone. I still um, get to see a lot of residents, which is very nice. I go up to the clubhouse once a week and hand out mail. So that's nice to see everyone that lives in a cottage or a townhome to hand out their mail to them and see them. Uh, I still get that little communication between us. Yeah. Uh, I still get to do fun stuff, so I show movies um, a lot of the time, and then I still get to interact with everyone. Um, if you want to entertain our residents, like Carol Allen did this week with him Sing, I would love to have you entertain everyone <laughs> on 1390, so please contact me. Also, I do virtual bingo. I'll see you all tonight at 645. <laughs> Bingo's been a big hit, right? It has. We've had a lot of residents that usually come from what I hear have played virtually, which is a great thing. Um, so a lot of residents are very responsive to the 1390 stuff. So we we'll ha might have to keep a lot of that up when everything blows over. So how many winners are you averaging on a normal so bingo night? <laughs> on that so the first week we did question. bingo, we had 54 residents win, a lot of them won once or twice. So lots of candy was given out mm -hmm. on that first week. And I think last week we had around a little over 20. Wow. So um, we cut it. We are cutting games shorter last week than we were the week before. So. We're getting it down to a science. Me and the Hearts and Jan Koontz, we're getting it down to a science on Thursday nights. That's awesome. Well, and I know we're ordering a lot of candy. We right are. Now. We are. And, you know, another thing that I do is I do the Encompass, which has the birthdays in it. Right. And today we have one birthday, 
and it is Sanders Dallas. So happy, happy birthday, Sanders. Happy birthday. <laughs> I actually got to speak with him earlier and tell oh. him happy birthday. Fuck. I know. So he's having a great day. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. So you mentioned residents contacting you if they want to entertain. What are some other things they could be providing you with to help us continue to be creative? Because we're having to really try to think outside of the box right now. If you have a program that you've really enjoyed that you think would go well with our Musical Mondays or Comedy and Culture Tuesdays, we would love to show that on 1390 because, you know, there's only so many movies we can watch <laughs> until we get a little tired. So yeah. if you have anything, if you have a candy suggestion you want to add to the bingo lineup, let me know. I will gladly order that on Amazon. <laughs> that is an essential thing that is delivered in two days. So, And I think we are going to start... Um, we were talking yesterday about starting to try to have some of our furl instructors. We did an enlightened class yesterday, and oh, we yeah. thought that didn't turn out so well. Yeah, right? it, the sound yeah. I heard wasn't too good for on 1390, so we're going to hopefully get some furl classes on instead of enlightened, um, just for the time being. So if you want to teach a furl class at a different hour other than the 3 o'clock hour, we can arrange that. I can arrange that because... I know how to work the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you of so much. You. And um, I guess we'll turn it over to your sister. For those of you who Which do way? not know, Brian <laughs> and Destiny have deemed themselves brother and sister, so <laughs> they call themselves that, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it yet, but it's okay. No, I'm kidding. They work incredibly well together. We have an awesome team. So. Destiny, your world has changed. We keep flipping you back and forth between Care Merge and the clinic. So tell us how things are in Destiny's world. In Destiny's world, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. I don't get bored. Um, so, yeah, I've been working in the clinic from like 8 a.m. to 12. And then I'll go back to my office and do a lot of the Care Merge things and doing home visits for wound care and stuff like that. And so we have a new staff member in the clinic. So the clinic falls under the resident services umbrella too. And Leslie Peel has been down there for a little while. And Destiny has been down there helping her um, get up to speed and training. And she is just doing an awesome job. So sure. you're kind of more back in the resident services care merge world now, right? Right. So we've added some new things on care merge. Tell us about those. Well, I put some games up. I did yes. not post an announcement, but you guys can go ahead and start playing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have air hugs. There's lots of things. So the picture today, the photo yeah. of the day was It air was hugs. air hugs from our staff, which is you guys can do that as residents and send that to the three of us, any of us, and yes. we'll post that on Care Merge. But make sure your groups of 10 or less and you're six, six feet, feet apart. apart. We posted one that had... It was a neighborhood at the end of the street, and it had more than 10, and I got some feedback on that, so we need to make sure we're And I don't know what staff member took that photo, but... Yeah, I wonder who that... He should have really he done have better on that attention. part. Yeah, yeah, we're all learning as we go, right? Um, and we've got something cool coming up on Care Merge that we're going to launch tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about that? Um, we are going to open a virtual gift shop. And it's going to be all the items that are in the gift shop. Well, we're starting out with cards, and then how things grow, we'll add more things to it. But we'll have volunteers that will be able to deliver cards to your mailbox, and you can send out cards to people. So cards, and I think we're doing the candy that's in there, right? And then we are also going to do Fashion Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah, Fashion Friday, where we'll have, we've been working with Mary Beth, and she is going to put together, I think, two outfits a week that we can post, and folks can order the clothing or the jewelry or the accessories or any of it. So for those of you who have missed shopping, I have, to, I have missed shopping. Me too. Have y'all missed shopping? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, well. <laughs> I don't shop. Well, Destiny and I have missed shopping. And so 
for all the ladies who miss shopping. We got this outlet for them so hopefully that will go well and uh, we are looking for more ideas for care merge too we can create pages for all kinds of things which is super cool so if you guys have thoughts on that or things that we can do or projects we want to know what that would be so please please let us know okay what am I missing y'all I think that's it are you ready for our I am again? do we want to talk about what it is Yes, so today you guys are, oh, I said you guys. Sorry, Mary, Mary Addison. <laughs> she just told you. She told me not to say you guys on she camera. Just said that. <laughs> um, so we are going to go over Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, and Google Duo, yeah. which are great ways for um, residents to communicate with their families because we're not really able to see them right now. And I know I use FaceTime a lot with my friends from college because we can't have our little reunions like we usually yeah. do. Yeah. So it's very nice. And so Zoom is also, we've had some requests from that. So I think we have some resident groups who mm -hmm. want to try to utilize it so they can do like a Bible study mm -hmm. together. And um, so we're going to walk through what we did was we put, we each took one category and we put um, a PowerPoint together. I two, Definitely well, has two, took but. Two, two small ones. I'm just too saying. Small. <laughs> I'm just saying. They were two little ones but a little two you did do two <laughs> that's correct um but we are going to walk through the presentation and kind of the basics but we did this intentionally so that we could distribute this powerpoint to residents right so they have instructions and then on the last page we put um videos links to videos on youtube for each each media so that if you wanted to go and do it so watch a video on how to do zoom it's actually a demonstration of that we were trying to figure out how we could do that here a demo of each one and it it was too clunky but so we have those videos in there for you as a reference too okay we're gonna start so we're gonna do one at a time and so and boss, I think I'm first right boss you're up first Okay. If I can walk across stage without tripping, that'll be awesome. So Zoom is the first one when this gets up and running. And basically for folks who don't know, Zoom is a video conference. So there is a phone portion to it where you can talk just like a conference call, but you're doing it video. Um, if you do it through your computer then you can utilize the phone the audio piece of your computer and also have it um, going with the video so if you wanted to for example I did a meeting last week with some friends via zoom and it looks like if you're on your computer there's a screen and you have all these different faces and everybody can talk just like a normal phone call or you can utilize a smartphone um, as well so let's um, get rolling on Zoom. So to start, you just want to go to zoom.com and you can do that again, computer, laptop, desktop, or with your smartphone. And the first thing you need to do is create your account. So you, it's free um, for the, there's a b different levels of accounts, but the basic one is free. And you just go to, Zoom sign up and enter your email address and then you'll get an email from Zoom. You will need to activate your account so make sure you look for that email and then you log into your Zoom account on the web at any time. Once you're logged in on the left side you will see a Zoom web portal where you can kind of navigate through the different options and update your profile, schedule a meeting, edit your settings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you're in your profile, you can add your picture, you can add your time zone, you can customize it as you would like to. And so to schedule a meeting, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the simplest way is when you're on the web portal, you will see meetings. It's a little button that you can push and then you sc click schedule a meeting. You choose and there's a screenshot where you can enter the date and time 
for your meeting, and there's some other settings. One of the settings on that initial screen when you're going to schedule a meeting, there have been um, a lot of news stories lately about security issues with Zoom because so many people are using it now and folks are learning how to hack into that um, just like every other outlet. They're figuring out how to do that. And so you can, and what I would strongly encourage you to do, you see you can set a password for your meeting. So what you would wanna do is just create a password and then give that to the folks that you're inviting so that they have that to make sure that only folks with that password are logging in to your meeting. So that's what they've created to kind of help make it more secure. You can pick the date and time, um, and then you click schedule. You can, um, on any of these devices, so, which is pretty much any kind of device, so Mac, Windows, I have at home a Google Chromebook that I've done this with, a smartphone, either an iPhone or an Android, you can download the Zoom app and it makes it a lot simpler to schedule meetings and then to sign into meetings as well. And on zoom.com there's a downloads page where you can find the app for all those devices. There's also on zoom.com a support page that is wonderful. In fact, that's where all this came from. And so you guys can go there and if you have questions, it just has all the information you could think of to help you get started. And so you are also able to, once you um, log in and you have the app, if you wanna do a test meeting just to practice and get familiar with it, you can do that. And I highly encourage you to do that. It's a good way to get up to speed. And so if you're the host, there's a lot of different ways to start the meeting and to schedule the meeting. When you schedule the meeting, you'll have the opportunity to send out invitations. Um, but to start your first meeting, you're gonna just log in and go to my meetings, and then there will be a list. So you, you schedule it first, and then when you go to start it, you just choose it and click start. And this just, again, is a screenshot to show you what that looks like. And then it will just launch automatically. When you're inviting others to join your meeting, it's really simple you just create um, when you're in the start a meeting or schedule a meeting it'll give you an opportunity to create an invitation and usually those are sent out with an email address but within the invitation there will be a phone number so if you have folks i know residents have brought this to me what about our folks who don't use computers you can give them the phone number to call in so they can be on the meeting, in the meeting by phone without having to log in on a computer. And I started to say, like I usually do when I present, does that make sense? But there's nobody to answer that, so I just really hope it does. Um, and if you wanna join another user's meeting, there's a lot of ways to do that too. But basically, once you've got the app and you've set up an account, if you're invited to a meeting, when you go into your account, a little box will pop up that says meeting ID, and that is a nine numbered, a, a number with nine digits. And you just enter that and click sign in, um, or join rather. So over there it shows you the meeting ID and you just um, enter the information there. If you want to just join by phone, again, this kind of walks you through um, after you join the meeting, you'll be prompted to join the audio automatically. If this prompt doesn't appear, you close out of it, you can click join audio. You'll have this little control at the bottom of your screen. And it has um, like chat, for example, if you're on the, a meeting like a Bible study with 20 people and you wanna point something out just to one person without disrupting, the meeting, then you can click the chat feature and you can send a message to either just one person or everybody that's, that's participating. And then um, you just click phone call and that will get you connected. And this is, I put instructions because I had that ask. What if I just don't have a computer and I wanna join the meeting by phone? Um, 
again, when you create the invitation, you'll get this, what looks looks like this little box that has the phone numbers folks can call in and if you're doing it from just your phone it will ask you for the meeting id and your participant id and then i've put some additional information in here i'm not going to run through all this in the essence of time but again all of this is coming into your mailboxes and this has specifically how to join a meeting by phone only. So we'll have this distributed for you. We'll also get this on Care Merge, so you have a, a reference for it. And again, at the end of the presentation, we've got a link to a YouTube video that will show you how to, um, how to do it step by step. So I'm gonna move on to Skype. That's me. Brian. I'm Skype. Brian Skype. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you guys about Skype. Like we, oh, I said, oh, I said guys again. Sorry, Mary Adamson. Uh, so Skype is a great um, tool that a lot of residents are already using to communicate with their families. The first way you get started is you just go to Skype.com. On Skype, you can download the app onto your desktop or your phone, tablet, whatever you're using. But so you can download the program and then you'll have to make a account with it. So to create an account with Skype, you can do it one of two ways. You can do a phone number or an email address. I suggest the email address because the phone number is a texting thing. So if you don't have a, if you're not comfortable texting, let's use our email. Uh, so you'll use your email and then you'll create a password. Your password says it here. I'm going to go over it has to be eight characters long, one uppercase letter, one lowercase, and a number. So make sure you know that before you make yours. And then you'll be utilizing your account. So you'll need to put your first name, your last name, and enter your birth date because there's an age restriction. So if you're under 12, you can't have a Skype. Uh, and then you'll have to verify your email for Skype, which is you'll go onto your email that you provided. So if it was me, it would be bstroud at riverlandingsr.org, and they'll give you a code. It's four digits, and you'll type that on to the Skype website as you're making your account. There'll be a little box for that. And then you'll have a security checkpoint to show that you're not a robot, which none of us are. And then you can click to make a profile picture. So I added my headshot from my church um, for my profile picture, so if any of you want to Skype me, we can talk later. And um, you can do an old picture of you and your husband, you and your wife, you and your kids, and then you will press continue, and then they'll test your audio and camera for Skype, which is a very important part of Skype. You do need to have a webcam or a microphone for it. Uh, if you have an iPad or any other tablet, those come with microphones and cameras built into them. So those are always good resources. Um, you can also order a webcam for your desktop off Amazon. And so you'll test your audio and camera, and then you will have to use those. And there's two options to adding contacts to your Skype. You can send emails by through Skype, so they will craft an email for you, and you can just type in the addresses for those people. Or you can add phone numbers if you know your grandson has a Skype, you can just type in his cell phone number and it'll add him. So Skype is a really great resource. I helped a couple residents last week with it and we Skyped with their families out in Arizona. It was really fun. But if you need help with Skype, contact me. That's all I got. Destiny. Okay, mine is a little more sweet and simple. Um, <laughs> so with FaceTime, it is, um, you can only use FaceTime with Apple devices. So if you have an iPad or an iPhone or a MacBook, any Apple device, but it can only be Apple. Um, and the person that you are trying to FaceTime has to have an Apple device as well, too. It, it won't work with an Android if you try to FaceTime someone from your iPhone to the Android. 
um, how to make a FaceTime call. So there's a couple of different ways you can make them. So you can either go to your contacts and find the person that you would like to FaceTime. And then you see in step two, you find the person and then you hit the little video camera and it'll bring up a little box with their, your face in it and then the person that you're calling, you'll see them on the other side. Or if you're on a phone call with someone, you can uh, just click on the camera on the phone where it says FaceTime. Okay, um, next is Google Duo. So this is more for people who have Androids or Android tablets, but it also works with iPhone as well. Um, you have to have the app, so you just install Google Duo on your device, on any device, and when you're using this Google Duo, the person you're trying to contact has to have Google Duo installed as well. So the first thing that you do, you will verify your phone number. Um, you'll enter your phone number and make sure it's correct. Tap agree, and Duo will send a code and a one-time text message to the number that you entered. And then you will just enter the code and that they sent a text message. Um, you can connect to your Google account. Um, you can use Duo across different devices, people with your phone number or Google account info, like your Gmail ad ad address. Um, they can all see that when you're using Duo. And you can add or remove any Google account from Duo at any time. Um, you can do video calls and audio calls. So if they have Duo, you can call friends and family across different devices. Like I said earlier, if they have an Apple and they have the app, then you can call them from your Android and still be able to FaceTime them. Um, so this knock knock is where you can see a live video preview of the person's face before they answer the phone. So if you're using <laughs> Duo and <laughs> you have the phone close to your face, the person that you're calling can see your face. So just be aware of that. <laughs> That's all. Any one quick question. Wow. Um, so Duo is pretty much the same function as FaceTime. Yes. Right. Very good. Okay. I think that's oh. it. Do y'all have anything else you want to add or share while you have the stage? I'll see you all at 645 <laughs> for virtual bingo. <laughs> have your candy choices ready. We hope this was helpful to you, and again, uh, um, we'll get it in your mailboxes by tomorrow, and there's links, and we'll get on camera today, right, Destiny? Yes. And then there's links to videos. So just know that we love you guys so much, and we know this has been a challenging time for all of us, but our job is to serve you. That's what we're here for, so don't hesitate to let us know how we can do that. We love you, and see you later.